biggest mistakes lads make when training for the Royal Marines is overtraining, and which leads to injury, um, and they got to delay the application form because they think they got to turn up super fit. Welcome back, team, to another video. Before we get started, let's go on to some sponsors. So we got Combat Fuel. So make sure you use code RM Trainer for fifteen percent off. And also come out and diet coffee if you do like your coffee. But before we get into this, make sure you hit that subscribe button, team. Let's hit that five thousand subscribers. So yeah, this video, as you can tell by the title, we are going over uh, how fit you need to be to actually start Royal Marines training. So there's a lot of information out there. A lot of lads get confused. They overdo it, overcomplicate it. Um, so we're hoping this video clears all that up, clarifies how fit you need to be, what you need to be training, etc. Leading up um, to recruit training. So yes, we get a lot of questions, fitness related, uh, on Instagram, on Facebook, on our Royal Marines training page. Um, about this, a lot of people, they don't feel confident uh, with their fitness, they don't feel ready. And the biggest thing is, you will never feel ready. Um, everyone's gone through it, i done it, I didn't feel ready going into recruit training. Every lad don't feel ready to go going into recruit training. You just got to do it, go down there and just embrace it. Um, yeah, you'll never feel ready. A good way is just building, com like training is building confidence, especially when you get towards the later uh, stages of training, uh, just outside before starting recruit training. Um, there is ways of building confidence. So you, uh, you feel confident when you go to recruit training. You're not going there like, what if, am I fit enough, am I ready, stuff like that, which we'll cover in this video also um, later on, so make sure you keep watching. So, um, yeah, biggest one is overtraining. Like I said at the start, there's a lot of information out there, a lot of lads think you got to turn up super fit, and the biggest issue is lads turn up too fit, um, that is the biggest issue when it comes to it, is lads turn up too fit and then they get injured in the first couple of weeks because they haven't uh, give their body enough rest to recover before going to recruit training. They smash the fizz like three, four weeks leading up to recruit training. You have all these niggles and injuries built up in your body. You go there. And then a little bit of stress, and then your body just breaks. Um, and that's you basically either leaving recruit training with an injury, or you're in Hunter straight away. So that's what we're trying to conquer with our training plan. We want you to be ready, but not over ready uh, where you get injured. So it's just a smart programming leading up to recruit training, bringing back that volume. Um, before you start recruit training. So, yeah, we get a lot of questions. Do you need to be running 30 miles um, before entering, entering recruit training? And the question is no. Recruit training is designed um, to progress you slowly and steadily throughout recruit training uh, so you get the best out of it. Um, and obviously you don't get broken. The last thing they want to do is every lad get injured. Every lad gets back trooped. They want you to pass. They want you to get through training. Pass out as an original. And get as many lads through training as we can. But obviously if lads are overdoing it. Turn up. Get injured. They then got to stay in Hunter for 6, 8 plus weeks. Um, it's not good for... The Marines, because they want to try and get you through recruit training as quick as possible. So, um, 
yes, the biggest question we get is how much running should you be doing? And uh, my question is two to three times a week, three times maximum. If running is a strength of yours, um, I just say you can run like 20K um, at a time, then obviously don't run as much. You can run once a week and just focus on the other stuff, circuit training, body weight, strength, trying to build strength, going for a walk, long walks with weighted, weight in a backpack, just stuff like that because you have that base, that uh, aerobic base already in place. But some lads may have never ran before, but they're always in the gym. So it's opposite for them. Their body weight um, is going to be through the roof. So they'll be able to do all the push-ups, all the pull-ups needed because um, they have that strength. But when it comes to running, um, that's where they fall behind. So again, just depends on you and uh, your weaknesses. So if you're a runner, drop the running down to like once a week maybe. Maybe incorporate it into circuits. So you're doing like a 200 meter run, a 400, a 1K um, run in a circuit. Or if you're a bodyweight ninja and you smash the weights in the gym, then focus more on the running side. Run in two to three times uh, a week. So one wants to be a long run. So I like to put a time frame on it. So like 30, 35 minutes, steady pace. And each week or every two weeks, just add five minutes or so. And just run as far as you can in that time frame. So don't put miles on it. So I, I got to run six miles today because you may not feel it. Uh, your body may not be up to that to run six miles. But if you go say, oh, I'd go for a 30 minute run, you could maybe hit four miles, you might hit five miles, you might hit two and a half miles. You're going to run at your pace that you feel comfortable running that day. So that's how I would do that um, if running's a weakness. So one wrong, long run, running for a time frame instead of a distance, and then maybe do like a hill sprint session or interval shell sprints. sprints. So maybe find like a local rugby pitch or football pitch and then start on the goal line, uh, run to the penalty spot back, uh, halfway line back, other penalty spot back, goal line back and just do stuff like that. You can make the intervals a little bit shorter and stuff like that. So how, how I would do that. But that's pretty much it and how... To answer one of the biggest questions we have, which is how much running do we need to be doing? And like I said, you don't need to be running 30 miles a day or a week. That's just stupid. And there you're overdoing it. That will lead to shin problems, ankle, hip, knees. All this could build up and you could just um, lead with a massive injury and be out for months, especially if you do have an airline fracture in your hip or your leg or something, you could be out for a good half a year plus letting that recover. Um, Fitness-wise, the biggest one I say, and I put a lot on social media, is as long as you can pass um, the candidate's preparation course, so CPC, which is the new version of PRMC, so as long as you pass that, if you pass that, that's pretty much you with a tick in the box saying you're fit enough to start recruit training and you've got the potential to become a Royal Marine. So as long as you stay that fit going into recruit training, you're perfectly fine. You don't need to go any, don't have to enter any fitter or um, any better than that. Because when you start recruit training, you're going to start from the right at the bottom. Um, so it's all good. If you can run 12K, you're going to go to recruit, recruit training. And the first run you do is one mile. Then you're going to go, oh, what's the point of running 12, 12 miles three times a week? When you're going to run week one, one mile. Week two, two miles. Week three, three miles. 
that's how simple um, the fitness is at the start of recruit training. It's nothing special. Um, like I said, it's progressive and it's progressive for a reason. And I think that's why another reason they brought ROP into it is it's basically four weeks um, for the PTIs to just get gauge where you are fitness wise, let your body recover um, before starting mainstream training. So ROP is there to hopefully let lads recover before starting recruit training. Yes, you will do fizz, but it'll be under a PTI. And like I said, it will be progressive over the four weeks. Um, and then you will be tested at the end of the four weeks to make sure you're ready to go into mainstream. But like I said, if you can pass CPC or PRMC, um, you're good enough to start recruit training. So as long as you can do the bleep test, the push-ups, the sit-ups, the pull-ups, um, as long as you can pass all them, then you are pretty much fine and good to go. Another test that I like to use is the old, the classic Royal Marines free miler. So 1.5 miles out around the 12 minute mark, rest a minute, and then 1.5 miles back, best effort. But as long as you're under 10 minutes, then you're pretty much good to go. Um, you can run 10K, do a 10K, as long as you're around the 50 minute mark or less, then again, you're all good. But like I said, if you've passed the CPC, that's you pretty much good to go for recruit training. So to answer this the question, how fit do you need to be to start recruit training? And the answer is not that fit as you think. Um, like I said, a lot of information out there that confuses lads. They overdo it. They think they got to run, like I said, 15K a week, um, do a 1,000 push-ups, do a 100 pull-ups before starting recruit training, and the answer is no. As long as you can pass the beat tests, you can hit the times on a free miler or 10K, um, and you're pretty much good to go. As long as you do keep your fitness up from the CPC, so the candidates preparation course, you're good to go for recruit training so thanks for watching hopefully this video helped you out a lot answered some of the questions you had if you do have more questions you can put them in the comments below or just jump over to our social media the links you can find in the description box below this video just send us a dm on social media we man that 24 7 so as soon as you send us a dm we get back to you straight away and then if you're looking for a training plan, looking for a structured training plan, keep you injured free and progressive, then again, we offer that. Both Royal Marines fitness training plan is body weight. And then we also offer a gym one. So if you use a gym, then we offer that as well. Royal Marines gym training plan. And then we have add-ons as well. So pre and fitness test and the candidate preparation course. That's a one-time download. So you download that and that's yours to keep forever. Um, and that basically leads you up. So the pre journal fitness test, download that, complete that, and it'll lead you straight up into your PRMC. So not PRMC, pre journal fitness test. I think it's eight weeks. So if you got your pre journal fitness test in like eight, nine weeks, download that, follow that. At the eight-week mark, you'll be good enough to pass uh, the pre journal fitness test, and it's exactly the same with our um, CPC, our candidate preparation course. That's a download program, download that, complete the program, and it'll take you into recruit training or um, CPC course. Good to go, and you'll pass that first time. So, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next video.